My shed is right full of junk, ready to be upcycled. Come on in and see what I'm creating. Okay, lots of ideas for this shelf, but most of them um, involve taking it apart. And I think that's what I wanna do. I wanna take it apart. It's just too big, too much of a clunky shelf for me. So gonna take it apart. I'm gonna turn it into three different projects. I have everything all taken apart, but when I took it apart, I didn't really pay attention. And this end is different than this end and I want them the same. So I've just put the board over top, traced where I need to cut it so I can have both ends the same. I'm gonna take those out to my shed and get those cut. And this I'm gonna use as a little shelf and I wanna cut the legs on a little bit of an angle so when you put them against the wall, it'll lay flat. So I've traced out the line that I'm gonna cut there. I'm gonna use my jigsaw to do all that. I'm heading out to my shed and I'll be back in a minute. This is one end off of the shelf and I cut it so now both the ends are the same so it'll look nice and uniform. And I'm gonna do a transfer with my polyacrylic sealer. I've done lots of these on my channel. If you haven't seen this done before, it's very similar to the Mod Podge, except you're using polyacrylic sealer. And I like using it if you want, if you don't want to paint your wood. If you want to keep your wood just the raw wood color, then this works well because it, it dries a lot clearer than Mod Podge. When you're doing the Mod Podge transfer, it has almost like a cloudy um, texture to it after you finish doing the transfer where this one doesn't. So I am going to make a sign for a bathroom. I'm using a matte finish with the poly acrylic and you're just going to paint it all over your graphic and then we're going to center it on the sign and we're going to let it dry. Now this method dries a little bit faster than the Mod Podge so this can be ready to finish up in a couple hours where the Mod Podge you have to leave overnight I find to get the best results. So we're going to just flip this over make sure it's nice and centered where we want it and then get all the bubbles and wrinkles out of it and we're going to let it set aside and dry completely. This is sat overnight. We're going to take a damp cloth and just wet the paper until you can start to see the graphics show through and then rub it off. I got all the paper rubbed off. This is a little bit trickier to do on raw wood um, with the poly acrylic, but it does work. As you can see, it's not perfect. You get a really rustic transfer. But that's what I kind of wanted for this sign. So it worked out perfect. And now I'm gonna seal it with some polyacrylic sealer. A beautiful natural wood sign, just made with polyacrylic sealer. Takes a little bit of patience, but it works fantastic. The other end of the shelf, I think what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna turn it into a big farmhouse sign. I had this chunk of wood, um, and it's really kind of rustic looking. I'm gonna screw this board into the top of it, make it all one piece and turn it into a real old vintage sign. I've got it all nailed together with a little bit of wood glue, but there's a little bit of a crack right here. So I'm gonna take my wood filler. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just gonna take some wood filler and just kind of fill it in a little bit just so it looks like it's all one piece. My wood filler is all dry and I am ready to get painting. I'm gonna give this a real chippy, fantastic farmhouse look. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some candle wax and then I'm going to add some black chalk paint. black chalk paint's all dry. I haven't done any crackle paint in a while. That's what I'm going to do today. And if you haven't seen me do it before, it is so easy. All you need is school glue and you just put it on your project. As much as you put on will determine how thick or thin your cracks are. I'm going to do probably a pretty thick coat so I can have some pretty big crackles in this. And you just spread it out over your Whole project. You can use any kind of school glue. Just the cheap stuff works too. You don't have to use the, the Elmer's. 
and just spread it all over everywhere that you want your paint to crackle on top. Just spreading it around really good. And the places where you have it thicker or thinner, then you'll have thicker or thinner crackles. I have a full tutorial with the full steps. I'll put a link down below in the description and you can watch that. Okay, we're gonna let this sit just to tack up just a little bit for about two or three minutes. It's been two minutes. I'm gonna take my white chalk paint. Now the trick with this technique is just do long strokes. You don't want to go over that paint any more than once or twice and don't pull your brush back because that will wreck the crackling effect. So you just kind of slop it on because we're trying to achieve like an old rustic vintage looking piece of wood. So they're never perfect looking. And you just, you can go up and back, but don't do any more. Just leave it as that. You can go up and back and you can go up and back and leave it. Slop it on and you can do more colors underneath too. You just can kind of play around and see what you like. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. We're gonna let it crackle and you'll see the fantastic result when it's all dry. This is all dry and look at the cracking and the aged look that this has. I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna give it a really good sanding to finish it off. We are ready to turn this into a sign. I am going to do my Mod Podge reverse graphic. I have printed off, I'm using a, a graphic that I made, Vintage Market Antiques Junk by Cell Trade. You can, as you can see, I've printed these off on three different sheets. Just keep sizing it up until you get the size of your board within your word program and you can make bigger signs. I have a full tutorial with a more in-depth step-by-step on how to do that. I'll put a link down below in the description. I'm just going to cut these out and size them up on my board and get them where I want to before I get the Mod Podge going. Okay, after I printed the graphics off, I wasn't really happy with the size that they were and how they looked. So I fooled around with them a little bit, resized them, and I really like the way this is now. And this took a little bit of time, a little bit of measuring. You keep making them bigger in your word program or smaller to fit the area that you want and uh, it works perfect. So we're gonna use our Mod Podge mat and get this put on the sign. Okay, it's the next day and I'm gonna finish this sign up. Now one tip, if you are making signs on top of this crackle paint, you have to make sure that you don't put too much water on. If you put too much water on your sign, it will reactivate the glue and it'll rub off really easy. So you have to just be really conscious of that. Just put just enough water on, just so you can just start to see the letters show through and do small sections. Don't do the whole sign and make it all wet. Just do one section at a time and just take your time. I have it all rubbed off. And it's a little bit of a job. I did this through um, fast speed, so you didn't have to watch me do it, but it actually took me probably about a half an hour to finish this and rub off all the paper. So it is a bit of a job. And you can see here, I've done a lot of these signs and even still, I rubbed some of that off. I don't mind it with this type of a sign because it's very rustic, very vintage looking. And I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I'm gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer and we're finished. So just taking the top off of that shelf, I was able to create this with another piece of scrap wood that I had. So easy and I 
love it. If you haven't tried that crackle paint technique on any of your projects, give it a try. It's lots of fun. And I'll put a link down below in the description for the full tutorial I have on it. Okay, first project is an old aluminum, I think, frying pan. I have a really great idea to use this in the garden. I've taken this down to the sink and I've given it a really good scrub with some soapy water. And now I'm gonna use some alcohol and clean the inside of it because we're gonna put some Cricut graphics on this. I've designed some graphics. We're gonna print it off on our Explore 3. I got my graphics all weeded and the transfer tape on and I'm just going to peel them off and put them on my frying pan. Make sure I have it nice and centered. And we'll get it stuck down. And I've made a fun sign for the garden. The handle of the frying pan, I've just stuck into the dirt. We have only frozen ground here right now, but once I'm ready to put my garden in, this is going to go out there as decor. This is gonna be a really easy upcycle. I'm just gonna turn this into a hanging uh, plant hanger. I'm gonna use this as the base, find a pot that will fit in here. I think it would look beautiful with a nice ivy in it. And I am going to use this old chain that I found out of the scrap metal bin to use as the hanger. This was such an easy upcycle, and I'm pretty sure that was probably off an old antique lantern. I just love the bottom of it. It's so ornate and beautiful. I filled it up with some greenery. The chain makes it easy to hang. I love the way it upcycled. You guys know I love my farmhouse signs. I'm going to make a very rustic, farmhouse sign with all of this stuff. Put something together with one of my great graphics. I'm going to use the chain and turn it into a hanger on the top when it's all finished. So lots of work. Let's get started on this. We are this. all ready to work on our sign. I'm going to put a base coat of some black homemade chalk paint. Whenever you're wanting to do the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer, you always wanna make sure that you pick a piece of wood that's really smooth. I'm always up for a challenge and this is not really smooth in this area right here. I'm gonna take a little bit of wood filler and just fill it in so it's a little bit smooth. Because what happens when I go to rub the paper off, it gets all in these little grooves and it makes it really difficult. So just to make my life a little bit easier down the road, I'm gonna put in a little bit of wood filler. I probably should have done this step on the raw wood, but I always get excited when I'm starting a, pro uh, a project, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this completely dry now. I'll let all that wood filler dry. Actually, my wood filler was kind of watery. I think it's almost at its end of its day. I need to buy a new one. But that's okay because it worked out really well because it smoothed over really good and filled in all those little creases of wood that I wanted to get um, covered up. I'm gonna let this completely dry, give it a light sanding, and then I'll put another coat of black paint over top of it. This is a lot smoother now that I've got the wood filler on there. It'll be easier to rub off my graphic when I need to. I wanna keep an outside edge that looks like a border of the black paint. So I've got my painter's tape and I'm just going to put that all around the outside. I've got it all taped off and I'm just gonna take some black and just paint along the side of that tape. So if we have any bleed through, 
the black will show and not the white. Just gonna put a touch of candle wax on this just to distress it just a little bit. And I'm gonna rub it all along that whole opening. And now we're ready to put on a coat of white chalk paint. All dry. Let's see what we have underneath this tape. Ah, perfect going to be a really great base for my sign. Let's make this look a little bit more rustic and chippy. going to take it out to my shed, give it a really good sanding. I'm going to do my Mod Podge reverse graphics on this. I love this quote. Uh, it's in my Etsy store. If you want to grab it, make sure you use the code SAVE50 for 50% off. I think it's gonna work out really well with all the bits and pieces that I wanna put on it also. I have sized this on two pieces of paper. It's really easy. You just size it up until you get the size of your sign that you want. I'm just gonna cut off the little extra paper on the top and the bottom and get putting it on our project. This is sat overnight, it's all dry. I'm gonna take my damp rag with just a little bit of water and we're gonna rub off all of this paper. I've got all the paper rubbed off. I'm gonna seal it up really well with my polyacrylic sealer. Top coat's all dry. I have all these little bits and pieces of stuff I've collected along the way, and I thought it would be really nice to kind of put them on this sign to display and um, just give it a little bit more interest than just a plain sign. So I've got some old screws that I've collected from other projects that I've done. I'm gonna use those to screw everything on the sign. This was an excellent way to use up all those little bits and pieces of hardware I had collected along the way and a perfect graphic to add to that sign. Love finding beautiful pieces of wood in this scrap wood pile. This is really nice and solid and I am going to turn it into a serving tray. These old handles, they've got some paint that's been splashed on them. It actually almost looks like an enamel paint. I don't think it's going to come off very easy. So I'm going to spruce these up and do a nice finish on this and turn this into a serving tray. Right. This is when I put the handles on, this already had a handle on it at some point and the holes are exactly where it needs to be. So I'll mount this right here and then I'll measure on this side to make sure that it's even. So this is already done and easy for me. I'm gonna put my first coat of paint on. I'm gonna put a coat of my black homemade chalk paint. First coat's all dry, breaking out the candle wax. I love using the candle wax to distress and this has got lots of lines and curves where we can put that wax on to make a fantastic chippy finish. I had a follower mention in one of my comments that I don't use enough color. The one reason why I don't use a lot of color, especially in the stuff that I'm making, is if you're doing it to resale, white, black always sells. As soon as you introduce any sort of fancy color, it's harder to sell. That being said, I'm keeping this for myself and I am feeling colorful today. I am gonna layer up all kinds of colors on this and do a real chippy layered color uh, paint. I'm first coat going to use some acrylic yellow paint. All dry, some more wax, and we're going to put on some peacock blue. 
we are good and layered. I've got my scraper out. I'm gonna scrape away at this. The first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna heat that wax back up, get it nice and melted, and then scrape away. I thought the colors were a bit too bold. I want to tone it down just a little bit. So I have some, just a little splash of almost like a baby blue. I'm just going to swipe on a little bit here and there just to tone it down just a little bit. Now for the magic potion, some Elmer school glue. I'm going to put a crackle layer on the top and then put some white paint on and we're going to have all those colors showing through the more glue you put on the thicker the crackle the thinner that you put it on the thinner the crackle and i'm just going to spread it all over the whole piece of wood it's a little bit messy but it's so worth the end result You want to get it right out to the edges because you want that crackle to be all the way across all of the wood. This is going to be such a fun, funky tray. I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. It sat for about a minute. Now we're going to take our white chalk paint and the trick with this technique working really well is to not work the paint into the glue. You wanna do long strokes, up and back, no more than twice. So up and back, and then up and back. And we're gonna do that across the whole piece of wood. If you're working that paint into the glue, you're not gonna have any crackles show up. This is such a fun technique to watch it all come together too as you start to see all of the paint peek through. Such a fabulous technique if you haven't tried it. Okay, we're gonna leave that. It's gonna take a couple hours and let it dry. This is completely dried and crackled and look at the color and the crackles in this. It turned out just amazing. And I am now gonna give it a really good sanding. I'm gonna take it out to my shed, use an 80 grit sandpaper and sand all of this and really make it distressed and it'll make the colors pop even more. Fantastic. I love it. I'm gonna paint the handles a nice yellow color, I think, to match this yellow that's peeking through here. I don't do much with a lot of color and I thought that would make this into a really fun tray if I painted these yellow. I'm going to take them outside and spray paint them. Here's a little trick that I like to do when I'm spray painting. This is just a takeout food container. I've pressed, there's little screws in the bottom of these handles. I've pressed them into the styrofoam. It keeps them up and you can spray them really well with spray paint. Grab them out of your recycling bin. I'm gonna seal this up really good. I have some polyacrylic sealer, satin based, and I'm probably gonna put two or three coats of this on this tray. The tray's all finished from that scrap wood. I love the way the handles turned out. I kind of distressed them a little bit and the boards distressed beautifully. Successful. Okay, so these were all grabbed out of the metal bin and I saw potential in them and I think I can make them pretty. I'm just gonna wash them up to get all the grime and dirt off them. My favorite paintbrush, the Wooster. I'll put a link down below in the description and up above because it's a fantastic paintbrush. And I'm gonna put two coats of my homemade chalk paint all over this whole bucket. This homemade chalk paint recipe is really fabulous, so I'll also put a link down below and up above here for that recipe. I'm gonna put on my Farmer's Market graphic. This is available in my Etsy store. I'll 
and I printed my own graphics out on these napkins. It's a really easy technique. I also have a tutorial for that. I'll put that link down below and up above here. And I'm just removing all the edges, all that straight line edges and make it kind of ragged so it blends into the pail better. I've got it on a plastic sleeve. I'm going to put it upside down and put water all over it so it will um, be easier to manage when I put it onto my sap bucket. I find if I was just going to put this napkin without having it doing this technique right on the bucket, it seems to really go wrinkly and gets lots of air bubbles. This seems to eliminate a lot of that by doing this technique. You have to be very gentle because it'll rip really easy, but I'm just kind of pulling it out just to get any little wrinkles out of it. Let the water soak in and then I'm going to take a cloth and dab up all the excess water. And now I'm going to use my Mod Podge mat and I'm going to put a thin layer over the whole area where I'm going to put that graphic on. And this type of decoupaging is just called a water transfer. Um, super simple, super easy, and I always have really good results with it. So you should give it a try. Now you're just gonna pick up that plastic sleeve with the graphic on it and lay it right where you want it. And the nice thing about this is if you can just really gently move it around if it's not centered exactly where you want it, just be very careful because it is very um, fragile. And then you're just going to press it down with your fingertips and get all those little wrinkles and air bubbles out the best that you can. And when doing this technique, you always wanna have the same color background as a napkin. So that's why you want the white on the white or you will be able to see the outline of the napkin. Very gently peel away that plastic sleeve. Make sure you're not bringing up the napkin and it is adhered perfectly to your project. And then I just like to take a little bit of saran wrap, kind of rolled up in a ball, and just if there are any wrinkles or bubbles left, you can just press them out with that and it'll uh, get rid of them. I've let it dry completely and now I'm gonna put a top coat. And because this is probably going to be outside on either my covered deck or porch, um, I'm going to put my Verithane Outdoor Polyacrylic Sealer in a matte finish. I like using the outdoor because it's a lot more durable than the indoor, especially if you're going to have your project outside. And I'm going to put a real good coat over the whole project and then set it aside and let it dry. Next project, this rusty old bucket. And I'm gonna just dry brush, just latex paint over it, just to kind of brighten it up a little bit because I do wanna put graphics on it also. And if I was just to put it on just the raw pail, uh, you wouldn't be able to see them very well. So I'm just putting a real dry brush coat of white latex paint all over the whole pail. Okay, hang on, there's a ding in the side of it. I'm gonna bang it out with my hammer, so hold tight. I'm going to have a little bit of a wiggly camera for a second. And I'm just going to work away at this and it probably will completely almost get that dent right out of it. And for this pail, I'm going to use my Vintage Market graphic. I love this one. And I'm going to do the uh, reverse Mod Podge transfer and you're going to print this off on your laser jet printer, reverse the text, and then you're gonna Mod Podge it onto the pail. So I'm gonna put a liberal amount over the whole graphic and then stick it onto the pail and you wanna let it set overnight. And then in the morning, once it's dry, I'm going to rub off all the paper and the graphic will stay on the pail. Make sure you have it exactly where you want it on the pail because once you set it down, you can't move it. So have it lined up really well, press it down, get all the air bubbles, all the wrinkles out of it, and you're good to go.
Okay, I left this overnight and now I'm gonna dampen it with a, a rag with water and you just wanna dampen it till you can start to see the graphics come through and then you're going to take off the paper. This is a little bit of a fiddly technique. Sometimes it works perfect. Sometimes you might have little bits and pieces that rub off where you don't want it to. I don't mind that because when I'm using this technique, it's always usually in a, th a farmhouse theme um, decor or a sign where I don't mind if it looks a little bit rustic. And especially when you're doing it on metal, it seems to not adhere as well as a wooden painted surface. So just be patient, give it a try. And um, if it doesn't work out the first time, paint over and try again. Okay, all finished, and I'm gonna put the same Verathane outdoor finish on this pail also. And sometimes when you do this technique, you'll find that there's kind of like a cloudy bit left on from the paper. When you put this sealer on, it will get rid of most of that cloudiness. And this one looks so rustic and farmhouse. I love it. I can't wait to put a plant in it. Okay, now to tackle this big planter. Um, I think I'm just gonna take the handles right off of it because I don't know how I'll get that wooden piece off that other end. So they're quite easy to pull off. I'm just gonna take them off, set them aside, put them in my shed because I'll use them on some other project. And I decided I wanted to do the salt and pepper painting technique on this. I want it to kind of have a faux cement um, finish. So I'll put the recipe down below. This is an awesome recipe to create that cement look and it's really easy. So I'm just gonna, it's probably gonna take two coats, maybe sometimes three coats, but I'm gonna put a nice liberal amount over this whole project. It has a real nice grainy stone finish to it with the salt and pepper added into the paint and uh, I love using it. And now on to the second coat, and you will kind of want to dab it on. You don't want to put too many brush strokes in it. And now for the finishing touch. You're gonna to take some of that pepper, and you're gonna take your brush, and the second coat is still wet. So while it's still wet, you're gonna take your pepper and just dab it into that wet paint, just kind of randomly all over the whole pail, and it'll give that rock cement finish look. And again, I have a full tutorial on this recipe and other projects that I've done with it. So check that out after you've watched this one. Okay, now it's completely dried and I'm gonna use my um, polyurethane spray and seal it all up really well. I didn't want to brush on, I wanted to just use the spray so I could keep that um, cement looking finish and this should be good to set outside too with this formula. Okay, all finished, and I love the way that they turned out. They're gonna look fantastic on my deck and on my porch. And the best thing about it is they were all free. Other than the cost of the little tiny bit of paint, I've upcycled these, give them a new life, and I love when I can do that. There's no better feeling than taking junk and making it pretty and saving it from the landfill. We are going to upcycle these pot lids. If you've been following along for a while, you saw I did a really big yard sale haul and I found a bunch of random pot lids and I had an idea of how I wanted to upcycle them. Today I'm going to show you what I created. I have four pot lids, they're all different sizes, and I'm going to incorporate them into this old wooden door. This is an old pine cabinet door and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off all of the hardware and then I'm going to cut it down to size with my skill saw. I'm cutting it down to the size I need it and I'm going to save that other piece for a project at the end of the video so make sure you stick through so you can see what I create with that also. 
I think this DIY needs a really good chippy paint finish. So we're gonna create that with some salt. This is a really easy painting technique to create that vintage chippy looking wood. I know it's not for everybody, but I absolutely love it. So I've painted the piece of wood with some white chalk paint and while the paint is still wet, I sprinkled on some pickling salt. Put it outside, let it dry in the sun, and now it's completely dry and I'm putting on my next coat of this red latex paint. You can um, switch your paints up and, you, and use any type of paint I'm just using up what I had and I love this red color. The red paint is still wet and I'm sprinkling that pickling salt right into that wet paint. You can use any type of salt. The more coarse, the more chippy, the more fine, you're gonna get not as much of a chippy finish. You have to really make sure that your coats of paint are completely dry before you put on your next coat. I've put on this turquoise on top of that red paint and the salt once it was completely dry. Now we're gonna let that coat dry. Put it out in the sun, let it really dry completely, and now I'm just gonna take my scraper and just scrape off all of that salt. And as you do that, wherever there's salt, you're gonna scrape down to that color underneath and it's gonna expose, for this project, as you can see, it's gonna expose the white paint, the red paint, even some of the bare wood, and it creates a chippy old vintage look. Once I've got it all scraped down, I'm taking my 80 grit sandpaper, really aggressively sanding it, and then we're gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer spray, and this is what I've created. It's gorgeous, I love it, and we're ready to incorporate those pot lids. I want to screw the pot lids right onto that piece of wood, but I don't want the screws to show. So what I'm doing is I'm taking off all of the knobs off the lid, and then I'm gonna screw holes underneath the knob so that we can attach it to the piece of wood and you won't be able to see it. Now the smallest lid already had a hole in it for steam to be released. So that one already has a hole. We're just gonna roll with that one. And the knob was actually riveted right on so I couldn't take it off. Now I had to put on my upcycling thinking cap for this because once I screwed the pot lids onto that piece of wood, I'm not able to put the knob back on. So I thought if I use this Gorilla Glue, I could glue the screw into the pot lid, screw the pot lid on the piece of wood, and then I'm able to screw the knob back onto the pot lid once it's attached to the piece of wood. Kind of confusing. Once you see how I do it, you'll understand. And now we're ready to screw those pot lids onto my gorgeous chippy piece of wood. I'm just using a regular screw and just screwing it right in. And the pot lid that already had the hole, I'm just going right through that. And then we're going to be able to just screw those knobs on because I glued the screws into the back of the lids. So now you can see what I was trying to do. I love the look of these tarnished lids and the old knobs. It just has such a fantastic rustic farmhouse feel. So I've taken this old cabinet door and these pot lids, and this is what I've created. A beautiful place in a farmhouse kitchen to hang some kitchen utensils, tea towels. You can hang it at the front door, hang some coats on it. Love the way that it turned out. Okay, next project. I found this old candlestick holder and this old teapot. Everything had been given kind of a rough coat of black spray paint. I am going to fix it up and upcycle it into something very beautiful. We're going to paint on a couple coats of my homemade white chalk paint. And once I've let the couple coats of the chalk paint dry completely, I've got a baby wipe. You can use a baby wipe or you can use a wet cloth. And I'm just going to rub away at the paint in just areas where it would have naturally aged and just take away the paint. And it's just going to give it that old vintage look. This is a great technique when you don't want to sand and ruin the surface underneath your project. You can just use a baby wipe or a damp cloth and you can see how it just brings out those colors from underneath and I love the look. Now I want to put this graphic on my teapot. I'm going to be using my Mod Posh reverse graphic transfer method and this graphic is available in my Etsy store if you want to try out this project afterwards. I'm just going to put a light amount of the Mod Posh mat on that graphic, put it on the teapot and then set it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. This technique works the best on a laser jet printer. Don't forget to reverse your text. 
Okay, it's the next day. I'm taking a damp rag. We're going to just wet the paper and you can tell you can just start to see the graphics show through and then rub off the paper. We're gonna be left with a beautiful graphic on our project. I'm now gonna attach the teapot to the candlestick holder using my E6000. It bonds really well. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue. I know some people have said that you shouldn't mix the two. I've never had any problems and it's always bonded really well. Set it aside, we're gonna let it dry until the next day. And then we are ready to seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. I love this clear gloss. And I've taken this teapot and candlestick holder and this is what I've created. I filled it up with some fresh herbs and it's beautiful to set on your patio or out in your garden area or even in your kitchen and you can clip off your herbs as you need them. Remember that piece of that I cut off the bottom of that cabinet door? I'm gonna upcycle it now. I did a chippy paint technique with some Vaseline to make it look really distressed around the edges and I'm going to add this garage graphic using the same technique as I did on the teapot. Mod Podge matte finish. We're gonna put it all over the graphic, set it down, wait for the next day, rub off all the paper. We're left with a fantastic graphic. And as you can see, I just love this technique. It's so nice and crisp. I'm using my laser jet printer and I'm just using regular computer paper. And if you're doing this technique yourself, make sure to remember to reverse your text or your letters will be backwards. So I've taken this scrap piece of cutoff from that cabinet door and turned it into a beautiful garage sign. Love the chippy paint on it would be great gift to give to grandpa or dad to put up in their garage. I was so excited when I found this chair. It's in really good shape and it's still really sturdy. I am going to preserve this paint. I try really hard to achieve chippy paint like this. So I'm not going to sand it down and start from scratch when this is what I usually try to get on most of my projects. I'm just going to take a 220 sandpaper and just sand the entire chair and bring some of that lighter teal up from underneath. When it was all finished being sanded, I put some black chalk paint on the base of the chair just to kind of neaten it up because it was kind of blotchy in different colors underneath. I'm going to seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer and it will be ready to display on my porch. This is going to be covered with a roof over it. If I was going to have it out on a deck and exposed to the elements, I would seal it with an outdoor polyacrylic sealer. I love the chippy layered look that I achieved just by doing a little bit of sanding and it is gorgeous. Next project, we're going to work on this window. The one pane of glass was broken, but that's okay because I can work around that and it'll just give it a little bit of character. I've cleaned it all down with some soapy water and some TSP just to get any grease and grime off of it. And again, like the chair, it has a fantastic chippy finish and I want to try to preserve that. I scraped off any loose paint chips, washed it down with soap and water, and then once it was all dry, I sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer. Once that was all dry, I'm taking my Windex on those window panes and I'm making sure it's nice and squeaky clean for the next step. I had these stencils and they fit perfect right in those square panes. I'm gonna spray on some spray adhesive so I can place the stencil in that glass and it won't move around when I paint it. And using my stencil brush, I'm going to paint with my black chalk paint. And once it was dry, I'm going to peel that stencil off and I'm going to repeat that process on all of the other panes. I love using the spray adhesive because it keeps that stencil nice and firm in its place. Once it's all dry, we're ready to use the Mirror Effect spray paint. I love this stuff and I've been using it on a lot of projects and the effect is fantastic for creating an antique looking mirror. I've taped off all the wood with some painter's tape. When you're using the Mirror Effect spray, you have to have a solution of 50% vinegar and 50% water. I've just put some in my spray bottle and I'm going to spray on the Mirror Effect a light coat and then I'm going to take that water and vinegar mixture and just spritz it on that wet spray paint. Once it's 
sat for about 30 seconds, you're gonna take a paper towel and just dab at it. You're just gonna dab wherever there was that vinegar and water mixture, that paint is not going to stick and it's going to give it that mirror vintage effect. I'm gonna do two coats on this mirror doing the same process. You can spray the vinegar water before you spray or after you spray. I don't find it makes that much of a difference. Everything is completely dry now and it already is starting to look fantastic, but we're going to put some black paint on the back of this over top where we put the spray paint and that will let the mirror show through better. Just putting one coat of my chalk paint over all four of those paints and then peeling off the painter's tape and it is all finished. If you haven't used this mirror effect spray paint, you should give it a try. I'm almost obsessed with it with all of the projects that I've been using it on. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can grab some for yourself. And what a great dump find. Now to tackle this table leg. It has that metal claw foot and the glass ball inside. It is absolutely gorgeous and I wanted to incorporate it into a vintage antique looking sign. I had this rusty chain and we're gonna use that to hang the sign from the table leg. To make new wood look old, I like to take a hammer all around the outside and put dings and chips and holes in it before I paint it. I'm gonna use some candle wax all around the outside. Wherever you put candle wax, the paint's not going to adhere and it just gives it an extra level of layers. First coat, some of my black homemade chalk paint. I always like to start with the darkest color first. Now we're gonna start layering up some colors. The first I'm going to use is this green acrylic paint. I really like creating a crackle finish with hairspray. So after that acrylic paint had dried, I'm gonna put a really good coat of hairspray all over that board. And then when it's dry, I'm going to put the next layer, which is this orange, and then put another layer of hairspray on. Hold tight, I know this looks funky, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. I wanted a little bit more of that green color, so I'm just kind of putting speckles of it all over the top of that last coat of hairspray, just brushing it on dry, and then I'm going to put on my last coat, which is some white chalk paint. Now to get that crackle to activate, I use my heat gun. I use it on the low setting, and you'll see as I dry, those crackles are already starting to appear. It creates a really fine crackle. It's such a fantastic way to make a new piece of wood look old. And then I'm just gonna take my scraper and anywhere there was candle wax or different layers of paint, it's going to bring up those different colors. And I like to use a stencil brush, dip it in a little bit of water and just brush away some of that top coat so it looks more aged and gives you those three dimensional colors. I'm gonna finish it off sanding it with an 80 grit sandpaper. And we've taken a piece of brand new pine and made it look antique and old. Now we're gonna turn this into a sign. I'm using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I've printed these graphics off on my laser jet printer on regular computer paper. If you wanna try this technique, make sure you remember to reverse your text. If you wanna create one of these signs for yourself, this graphic is available in my Etsy store. Make sure you use the code SAVE50 so you can get 50% off all of my graphics in the store. The sign has sat for 24 hours. I'm taking a little rag with a little bit of water on it and just dampening them so you can just start to see the graphics show through the paper. And then you rub the paper off and you're left with a fantastic graphic on your sign. And this is what I created with that table leg from the dump. I think it worked perfect with this sign and it looks old and vintage and antique. I still have the other table leg and I think I'm gonna make another sign like this because I love this one. I'm ready to tackle this gorgeous rocking chair. I couldn't believe when I found it and it's actually in really good shape. The wood's kind of dried out and the caning is a little bit brittle, but I'm pretty sure I can save it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and uh, wash it all down with some TSP, get it nice and clean, and then take a sanding block to it, a 220 grit, just to knock off any high edges or any little bit of stain or paint that may be left on it. I wasn't sure what products to use on it, so I took a picture of this chair and then I went to our local Home Depot. I have a fantastic painting section there and they're really helpful. 
and they pointed me in the right direction of what products to use. I'm going to put on some linseed oil that will just moisturize it and help it not be so brittle and stand up better. And for the wood, I'm going to be using some penetrating oil wood finish. And I just got a clear finish. I didn't want to stain it another color. I wanted to keep it this color. So I'm really excited to get at this and see how it turns out and talk about a fantastic dump find for free. I was so excited. I got it all prepped and it's ready for the finishing oil. I used a 220 grit sandpaper over the whole thing. It works really well. There's a few spots that it didn't come up and it left a little bit of a dark spot, but that's okay because it'll just give it character. And then we're going to put the penetrating oil on next. And then I'm going to, when that's all dry, put the linseed oil on the caning and I'm gonna have a beautiful rocking chair. So let's get to work. that I'm going to do today is this piece of wood. Now, what I think it is, is the end of a crate. I think there would be two of these and then that would be built into a box. But I think that it kind of looks like a cutting board. So I am going to aggressively sand it down. It had a lot of grooves in it from when it was cut. I'm trying to get it as smooth as I can. I'm gonna do my polyacrylic transfer method on this board. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply a really good coat of my polyacrylic sealer. This is water-based and you wanna make sure with these projects you're using water-based so it doesn't yellow on you. And then we're going to do the transfer method with these CD label sheets. We want that shiny piece of paper underneath. I always find these at the thrift store and I pick them up. They'll work with address labels, but you have to use a laser jet printer with this. It will not work with an ink jet printer. After that first coat of polyacrylic had um, dried, now I'm putting on a second coat of that polyacrylic sealer. And while it's still wet, we're going to lay that label sheet down into that wet polyacrylic sealer that we've printed on with our laser jet printer and then we're going to press it down really firmly and make sure that it's right into that polyacrylic sealer. Let it dry, it'll take a few hours depending on your weather, and then you just peel off that label sheet and your graphic's gonna be left on your project. Now you can see my wood was still a little bit rough and the transfer didn't take in that one little area, but it still looks fantastic. I love that rustic feel of it. Now this isn't going to be a usable cutting board, this is for decor only, but I love the way that it turned out. And my dad gave me these for free. I have six or seven other ones too that I can't wait to do this technique on. Whenever I head home to visit my parents, they live three hours away, I always tell my dad, save any little bits and pieces that you think I can upcycle or scrap wood, and he always does. I'm pretty sure this came out of an old sewing machine cabinet. I'm gonna clean it up really well with a wipe and then we're going to take two candlestick holders and a little glass knob and I'm going to glue them onto this sewing machine drawer. Now the E6000, I always struggle with it when it comes to the end, a little hack, cut it in half and you can squeeze more glue out of it. We're gonna glue those candlesticks onto the bottom, the knob on the front, and I've turned this old sewing machine drawer into a elegant, piece of home decor. I had a 
friend give me these baskets for free. She didn't want them anymore, so I took them because I have an idea of how I love to upcycle these, and I'm excited to share them with you because it's so easy to do. I find the handles really date them, and a lot of times you can just take the handles right off the basket without affecting the basket itself. This one just cut right off. And if you are out and about at the thrift stores or yard sales, these baskets are super cheap. You just have to take a look at them and see if they're attached and weaved right into the basket. If not, then they're easy to take off. This one just pulled out. It takes a little bit of uh, strength to pull it, but it comes out nice and neat. And then you're left with a basket without a handle. And I just think it doesn't look as dated. Now I'm gonna take the plastic liners out of these, but if you're gonna keep them as planters, then just keep the plastic liner in them if they do have it. My circle of friends all know that I am a fanatic when it comes to upcycling, so they're always giving me stuff that they don't want anymore that I know I can upcycle and I can get it for free. And I love that challenge. Now here's how you can update these wicker baskets. I have a stash of hardware and I just pull out what I think will look nice on the baskets, leave the little screw in the back, poke it through that basket and it'll adhere to the front of it. And I just think it just gives it that upscale look than just a plain basket. And then you can display it in your home and fill it with whatever you would like. These look fantastic with greenery in them. You can put them in the kitchen and keep your tea towels and your utensils in them. You can put them in the bathroom on the back of the toilet and fill them up with toilet paper. So many ideas, but I find just by adding this little handle on the front of them, uh, it just really takes it to the next level. And if you can't fit the little screws through the weaving on the baskets, you can always just hot glue that knob or that pull onto the front and that will work perfect also. Now this basket, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna flip it upside down. I had this piece of hardware in my stash, putting some hot glue on it, and I'm going to glue it to the front of this basket that's turned upside down. Gonna make sure that it sticks really well, and wait till you see what I did with that one. So I've taken all of these baskets, added the hardware to them. I think it's really perked them up and made them not look so dated when I've taken the handles off of them. And this little basket, by turning it upside down and adding the hardware to it, and then putting a plant on top of it, it just raises your plant a little bit, and I think it looks beautiful. I found this little piece of a spindle in a burn pile, actually. I just cut the ends so they were nice and flat. We're gonna get out our Gorilla Super Glue, this votive holder that was in my stash for forever. We're going to glue it on top of that little piece of spindle. And I've created this really cute little candle votive holder. And then by having it on that bottom of the spindle, I just think it looks really primitive and I just love the way that it looks. Next project was this old basket that was in the wood pile at the dump. Somebody had made it into a little Easter theme basket, but it was really needed to be upcycled. I'm gonna spray it with some black spray paint. It's just gonna kind of give it that distressed look underneath after I put the chalk paint on top. I'm gonna put a couple coats of that chalk paint and then I really aggressively sanded it with some 80 grit sandpaper and this is what it turned out like. Now we're gonna put a graphic on the front using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. You've seen me do this lots. I've printed this off on regular computer paper. We're using our Mod Podge mat. We're going to apply the Mod Podge onto the front of that graphic and then put it on our project, get all the bubbles and wrinkles out of it, let it sit for 24 hours and then dampen it with a rag and then rub off the paper. Once I had all the paper rubbed off, I'm gonna add some polyacrylic sealer. So this was our before and this is our after. Love it. And putting that kitchen graphic on the front, you can fill it up with tea towels and utensils. Would look perfect in a farmhouse kitchen. And this was a fun upcycle. Okay, so here's the dresser and I found it in the dump, in the wood pile to be thrown out. Um, and it needed a little bit of TLC. I power washed it, took all the handles off of it, and gave it a real good sanding. 
I then painted it with my homemade chalk paint and I gave everything two coats. The black color that I used is the Bear Marquee Black Black and I love this color. I have a tutorial on how you can mix any paint into a chalk paint and I'll put that link below in the description. The nice thing about making it into a chalk paint is you don't have to prime anything before. After it had completely dried, I put the poles back on and left the natural color. And I also found this frame in the dump and I think it was probably off of a cabinet or a dresser and it originally had a mirror in it. I decided to put a pegboard in it and create my craft station. I got a sheet of pegboard from Home Depot and I volunteered my husband to give me a hand and cut it out to fit the inside of the frame. We traced out the size of the pegboard and then used our scroll saw to cut the exact size to fit right in where the mirror would have been. And it fit in perfect. I went to our local Home Depot and I picked out a color that I wanted to paint the frame in and I am loving this color. It is the Bear Marquee and it's called Glazed Pears. I'll put the code down below in the description. I washed the frame all down and then gave it a light sanding and I'm going to give it its first coat of the Glazed Pears. And I gave it two good coats before it was finished. Now we just took our drill and a small drill bit and drilled holes so we could put in some finishing nails to hold that pegboard in tight. And we just took the finishing nails and put them in that little pilot hole and gave it a little tap all around the whole pegboard. And there's my finished craft dresser and all it costs was the cost of the pegboard and my paint. It's got lots of storage in the drawers lots of room for me to add lots more onto my pegboard and I'm loving the yellow color. So if you ever see any of these out in the wild when you're out thrifting or if you are having access to grabbing any free stuff curbside, pick them up because you can create some beautiful things that was actually probably just meant for the dump. I love to upcycle and repurpose and I think this turned out pretty good. It was a success. First project that we're going to work on is, I think this is off the back of a chair. I found it in the wood pile at the dump and it probably had broken and this was the off of the top. One bonus was somebody had already painted this black, which I love. So I'm just gonna distress it and make it look rustic and not repaint it. I used an 80 grit sandpaper and I love the color of the wood peeking through just finished it off perfectly. Now I'm going to use my wax and I'm just going to wax that whole frame and it just makes everything pop even more and the back of it I'm eventually going to paint it but for now I've just cut a piece of press board and that's what we're going to turn into our sign. Painted it with some black chalk paint and then I'm putting some candle wax all around the outside just to give it a distressed look and it's going to fit right into the back of that frame perfectly. Now we're going to get at the graphics. If you've been following along, you know I love using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. That's how I'm going to make this sign. Using my Mod Podge mat, I've printed these graphics off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text on regular computer paper, making sure that it's lined up exactly where I want it, and I've let it sit for 24 hours now, dampening the paper, and then rubbing it all off, and we're left with beautiful graphics on this piece of press board that we're going to put in the back of that chair. I'm gonna seal everything up with some polyacrylic sealer and then I had these little tiny nails and I'm gonna nail that press board into the back of that chair frame. So here's the before, that old frame off the back of a chair, I think, and I have upcycled it into this gorgeous sign. And I love this quote. It's available in my Etsy store if you want to grab it and make one of these signs for yourself always be on the lookout for any type of salvage wood that you can turn into a sign because they sell really well. The project that I'm gonna tackle is this 
barn board with the hinges. It looks like it was obviously a door of some sort and I'm gonna upcycle it into something beautiful. I had this plaque that I picked up at the thrift store, was stained, some of the lettering had rubbed off. So I painted it with some of my black chalk paint and then I dried it to speed up the process with my heat gun. This was a piece of paper that I printed on, coffee stained it, really wrinkled it up, and I'm gonna decoupage it on the front of that plaque, just using some Mod Podge mat. Once the Mod Podge has dried, I'm gonna seal everything up with a matte polyacrylic sealer. The nice thing about all of these projects is the only cost that I have in them is a little bit of the cost of product. Everything else was found and was free. That way I can make a good profit when I go to sell it. And I had these rusty old screws that I saved off another project and that's how I attached the plaque to this barn board. I love the way that this turned out. This actually might be staying with me. That's one of the problems I have. I create these things and then I can't get rid of them. Okay, next piece of salvage wood. I have absolutely no idea what this was, but somebody spent a lot of time cutting this out and then they just discarded it. So saw the potential, brought it home. This one is going to turn out fantastic. I have a really great idea. I'm gonna layer up lots of chippy paint on this. First step, I'm using my candle wax. I'm putting candle wax all around the outside and the inside of this salvaged wood. And then I'm painting over top of that with some homemade black chalk paint. If you've never made homemade black chalk paint, I'll put a link down below in the description so you can make a batch yourself because it works fantastic. Now we're gonna be really aggressive with this candle wax. I'm applying it over all of this black chalk paint. Anywhere you put candle wax is going to have the paint that you put on top of it not stick very well. And I have got this beautiful acrylic paint that I'm putting on top of this. This is just acrylic paint that I picked up at the dollar store, but I love the teal color of it. Once it was dry, I went back with the candle wax again and was really aggressive, applied it all over, got out that yellow paint that I love. I'm almost at the end of this tester with the yellow paint, let it dry completely, and then I'm putting the candle wax on top of that again. Now I've dried that paint completely and I've also softened up that wax with the heat from the heat gun. Using my scraper, I'm scraping away at that paint and anywhere there was that candle wax, you're going to bring up those colors from underneath. So look at all of this beautiful chippy texture that I've created just with a little bit of paint and candle wax on a free piece of wood. Now for the back, I just found this piece of wood I had in my stash and I'm going to paint it with some black chalk paint and then I'm gonna put some of that yellow on and we're gonna give it a little bit of a textured uh, chippy look also before we turn it into a sign. Now all of my signs I sell locally, I'm very fortunate, but there's many ways that you can sell them. Facebook Marketplace, on Etsy, you can go to craft sales or if you have a booth, these all sell really well. And when you don't have to pay anything for the wood, all you have is the cost of your products to make them. You can have a higher profit and have more money in your pocket and you can be really creative in the process. I designed this graphic and I think it's gonna work perfect on this piece of wood. Doing my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Now I have a full tutorial on how you can size your graphics. I had to do this in two or three steps so I can get all the right sizes of the graphics to fit on this piece of wood. And it sized up and worked perfectly with this graphic. It's available in my Etsy store if you wanna grab this one. If you're a tea lover, it's a must graphic. 
I'm gonna use my hot glue gun and press that piece of wood in its spot. And then I'm gonna go in and just tack it in with some of those little nails. And paint the back so it looks nice and neat. lots of tips and tricks and inspiration here so if you find some salvage wood of your of your own you can make some signs I'm just taking some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding this down because it had a really glossy finish on it and I want my paint to be able to adhere to it so taking it right down to the bare wood I have some wood filler I'm gonna fill up those holes let it dry and then get painting when my, I'm making my signs and I want them to have that distressed old look, I always start with the base black. I find when I'm sanding it afterwards, that black peeks through and it just gives it that aged look. But that's my preference. You don't have to do that step. Now, if you missed my video on how to DIY your own silicone molds, you have to go back and watch it after this video because you can make your own molds and you can incorporate it into so many different DIY projects. This is a mold that I used with a stamp and I am going to incorporate this into my sign using some air dry clay, pressed it into the mold and I'm just going to make sure the back is nice and flat and then we're gonna peel it out and I have this gorgeous air dry clay uh, piece that I can put on my sign. I'm going to clean it up a little bit and then set it aside and let it dry. Now this is the next day. I used my Gorilla Glue to glue that clay embellishment on the top and I'm just putting on a couple coats of my white homemade chalk paint and taking in and just dry brushing around that mold with a little bit of that black chalk paint and one last distressing around the outside. If you're a seamstress or love to sew, you're gonna love this graphic. Same process, Mod Posh reverse graphic transfer method. As far as making signs, this is the most affordable way. You don't have to buy vinyl, you don't have to buy stencils. All you need is a little bit of Mod Posh paper and a printer. And you don't even need a laser jet printer. You can do this process with an inkjet printer also. And I have some videos comparing those two printers together so you can see the difference. I printed these graphics off on two or three different sheets, sizing them up the way that I wanted them to fit on the sign. And it is absolutely beautiful. I love it. I love this graphic. Again, it's available in my Etsy store. So I've taken that boring piece of pine and this is what I've turned it into. So if you're looking for a way to make a little bit of extra spending money, making signs is the way to go. And they always sell really well. I found this cabinet in the dump. Uh, looks like it was a wall cabinet with a shutter on the front with a couple shelves and I had an idea what I wanted to do with it. A little dusty and a little dirty and I'm gonna clean it up and upcycle it into a beautiful cabinet. I'm gonna incorporate these spindles and this little top that I found off the back of an old chair um, and put them together with the cabinet. I thought that would look really cute on the top. I'm gonna to screw that in so it's kind of a focal point on the top of the cabinet. And the spindles I'm going to cut down and make four legs for the base. a great way to make legs for any pieces of furniture you have if you have old spindles laying around just cut them down to size and screw them into your project I'm gonna remove the back off of the cabinet because I have a fabulous idea in my head of what I would like to do with it I'm gonna wipe it all down, give it a little bit of a sand, um, and prep it for some homemade chalk paint.
This is my homemade chalk paint that I make. Um, I have a really great recipe. I'll put the link below in the description. It adheres really well to any kind of shiny surface or veneer, um, so you don't have to do very much prep work, and it works fabulous. I'm gonna remove the hinges and the knobs and I always have paint everywhere. Um, I'm gonna remove the hinges and the knobs and get ready to paint the cabinet. And I'm gonna give it a light sanding all over just to get rid of any crud because it has looks like it has been stored and it's quite dusty. I'm just using an 80 grit uh, sanding block and just scuffing everything all up. I get so excited when I find pieces like this, especially in the dump when it's free, um, and I know that I can do something with it to make it pretty again. So this is uh, this has been a fun project for me, trying to figure out what I wanted to do, but um, I'm excited for the outcome. Okay, and I'm gonna put a coat of the black chalk paint all over the cabinet. Anyone that's painted shutters before know these things are a bugger. Just takes patience and time. I'm gonna put a coat of paint on the spindles that I've made into legs and the piece of the wooden chair top that I'm going to screw onto the top of the cabinet. Everything has one full coat of the black chalk paint, all painted and ready for the next coat. Now everything's gonna get a coat of the homemade white chalk paint. and everything is gonna get a real good sanding. I'm using a 80 grit sandpaper on my palm sander and I'm gonna scuff up everywhere where it would be used or um, would wear down if it was really old. Um, and that's gonna make it look like a really shabby chic piece. Now for the fun part, I'm going to decoupage some napkins onto the back of the cabinet. 
Um, so I, I'm just going to, this is, these are three ply napkins. So I'm going to take the uh, back two ply off and just work with the one ply that has a flower, flower pattern and decoupage it with my Mosh Posh. What I'm going to do next is I like to have a rough edge along the napkin um, when I put it down on the piece of wood because it blends easier and it doesn't give you a straight line when you put the next napkin next to it. You can kind of blend the two pieces together and it looks much more polished and finished. I just got these napkins at the dollar store here in Ontario um, and I just love the flower print on them. I've used them now on a couple projects and I wish I had bought a few more packages of them. Okay, now we're ready to Mod Podge um, the napkin onto the piece of wood. So I'm just going to put a light coat on the board that's the size of the napkin. Uh, you don't want it too thick because it'll bubble and wrinkle a lot, but just a nice thin coat for the napkin to adhere to it. And uh, when I'm going to put it down, I actually don't mind if there's going to be a few wrinkles in it because that's kind of the look that I'm going for. But And it's windy in here today, so the napkin's kind of blowing around a little bit. But you're just going to place it where you want it and then just lightly just press it down. And then I like to take my paintbrush with just a little bit of Mod Podge on it and just adhere it down to the board a little bit better and um, push down all those little edges to to make sure that they're sealed to the wood. After the napkins have completely dried, put a light coat of Mod Podge over the whole surface. You'll see some of the little wrinkles in it. Um, I don't mind those. I'm going to give it a little sanding once it dries completely and make it look kind of uh, rustic looking. Now I'm going to screw the top piece onto the cabinet and I'm just going to screw it with two screws um, from underneath into the piece of wood. Um, this is just a fabulous piece and it was broken off of an old chair that I found in the dump and I saved this because I knew I would use it for some project someday. And I got the spindle legs screwed into the base of the cabinet. I am loving this. I love the floral print and it's going to look so perfect on the back of the cabinet. When you open up the doors, you'll see this floral pattern and make it look really vintage. And I'm just going to nail the back um, back onto the cabinet with the little nails that I took out of it. I've got it all nailed back down and I'm going to put a coat of the black chalk paint on the back of it um, just because it looks more professionally finished if you have the back painted, I think. And there you have the finished cabinet. Everything completely sourced from the dump. The chair back, the cabinet with the old shutter door on it and the spindles that I cut down for legs. My favorite is the back though with the floral print. It just I think finishes the whole cabinet and makes it look amazing. I hope you've enjoyed today's trash to treasure um, makeover and to see that it is possible to take something that was in the dump and make it beautiful again.
first thing I'm going to do is use a wire brush. I picked this one up at the hardware store. You can also find them in Walmart, Home Depot, um, probably even the dollar store. And I'm going to take the wire brush along the grain of the wood. This will help make the grain of the wood stand out more when we put our layered colors on. And there's no fancy way of doing this. You want it to look rustic and you want it to look kind of chippy. So I just take the wire brush back and forth. You can even go side to side and you'll see that you'll get little bits of sawdust coming off from the wire brush and the grains of the wood will be standing out more. It takes a little bit of elbow grease, but it's a good workout for your arms. You can also do this step with a wire brush on a drill, but I just found I didn't have as much control and I like using the brush better. And you can see how it's starting to bring out the raised edges along that grain. Pallets are really easy to find, especially around here and there's never any shortage of them. So I always can find lots to make signs or any little project that I wanna do. And you can see the grain in this one, it's got a nice little swirl to it. And once we put the paint on it, it's really gonna stand out. Okay, now we're ready to paint. I have some latex paint in a tester jar and some acrylic paint. And that's all you need to do this um, project. My first layer, I always like to use latex paint. You want the latex as the base because then when you do the next step, it will um, work better. So I'm just putting a liberal coat over the whole palette board. Make sure you get it in all the grooves and all the little nooks and crannies. If you use chalk paint or acrylic paint as the base, I find I didn't have quite as good of a effect in the end. So I always try to use the latex paint. Now it's completely dried and I have an 80 grit sandpaper on my um, sander and I'm going to be really aggressive and sand all those high parts of that wood right down so your board is flush. And then you're gonna have two colors. You're gonna have your bare wood and you're gonna have your latex paint. And that's what you want to do. Now you can maybe not sand it as much, but what we're going to do is we want to stain the wood on the top so the more that you sand off, the more contrast you're going to have between the two colors. And it already looks fabulous just the way that it is right now, but wait until we do the second step. And what I love about the palette wood is each piece is so different. They all have different grains and different saw marks in them. And uh, it just gives your project that you're making so much more character. Okay, now to finish these off and just take them to the next level. I have mixed up my homemade stain with the acrylic paint. I have a tutorial on how to do it. I'll put a link up above here and down in the description. You can get the recipe for that. So you just need to make your homemade stain, have a little bit of paper towel and a sponge and apply it all over that board. After you've applied it all over the board, you're gonna let it sit for about one minute, let it soak into the wood, and then you're gonna take your paper towel and wipe off all the excess um, stain. And as you're wiping away, the stain will not stick to the latex paint, but it'll stick to the raw wood, and that gives you your two tones of color. So you can see why if you were using a chalk paint or an acrylic paint, when you're doing this step, it would also soak into that paint where the latex paint, it lays on top and it doesn't soak in as well. So that's how you achieve the two different looks. And I know if you're a real crafter, we all have hordes and hordes of acrylic paint from the dollar store. So you can get so creative with different color combinations. And I just love the saw marks in this one. It has so much character. And if you've put on your first coat of stain and it's not quite as dark as you wanted it to, you can always go over the board and do a second layer until you get the desired color. Okay. 
And if you wanted to get really creative, you could sand down after this step and put a third color on. And I'm sure you'd have some wonderful effects with that. I love to use these palette boards to make them into signs, but I did something a little bit different today with these. So make sure you stick through to the end and I'll show you what I created with them. I love taking new wood and making it vintage and old and chippy like it's been around for a hundred years. I have all kinds of different painting techniques that you can check out after you've watched this one where you can achieve different looks but still make new wood look old. So make sure you check out those different videos after you watch this one. And now to finish them off I'm going to take my sander and sand them up and give them a little bit more of a rustic look. Now these boards are going to be outside, so I'm using my Verithane Polyacrylic Sealer for the outdoors. Um, if you're going to have your project inside, you don't have to use the outdoor one, but because this is going to be out in the elements, I want to give it that extra seal. So I'm just going to put two coats over each board to seal them up really well. And when you put the polyacrylic on it, it just brings that grain of that wood out even more. Okay, I got them all done. They're all dried and we're ready to make my project. And I'm so happy with the way that they turned out and I love all the colors that I used. And this is what I'm going to use them with. I found these at a, a yard sale. I think I picked them up for a couple dollars. The tops were rotten. I took them off. I love the base. I'm not touching them. I love the color. I love the chippy rusty. And I'm gonna make them into plant stands. I cut the palette boards to size. Three of them fit in perfect, so it was meant to be. What do you think? Do you like it? So next time you see a palette, grab it, cut out some boards, and try this technique. I found these fabulous candle lanterns in the dump. They were dirty, they were really sun bleached, but they were still in really good shape, and I knew I could perk them up and make them beautiful again. I'm gonna take the handle off the one lantern. It just has a jump ring and I can just squeeze it apart and take it off. And I'm gonna put some masking tape around that metal piece cause I don't want it to get any spray paint on it. I'm taking it outside and I'm just gonna give it a light coat of white spray paint. I wanna give it that sun bleached white color. Obviously somebody didn't see the potential that these lanterns still had because they turned out beautiful just with a real light coat of spray paint and brought it back to life for free. The glass votive holder on the inside of the One Lantern was still there, was not broken. I cleaned it up and put in a little tea light. And the other lantern, back in one of my older videos, I made some candles with a tuna tin can. And that's one of those and it fit in there perfect. And look how gorgeous these are. Sun bleached kind of white look, much better than the before. And they're ready to put out on my patio. Second project is this old lantern that I found in the scrap metal bin. It's really rusty but it has so much character and I wanna preserve that rust. I don't wanna paint it. So I'm taking my engine enamel and I'm gonna give it a really good coat and seal in all that gorgeous rust. I love using the engine enamel for this type of a project. It seals it up really well so you can put it out in the elements and you can find it at a automotive store or you can also find it on Amazon. And I'll put the link down below in the description so you can check that out. The engine enamel that I bought has a bit of a gloss finish and it just made that rust pop. I love it. In one of my previous videos, I did some tin can upcycles and I made this tin can. I loved it and wasn't quite sure what to do with it. I know what to do with it today. I made a homemade napkin and decoupaged it on top of this tin can and it fit in this lantern perfect. I added an ivy and it is going to look gorgeous on my front porch. I've taken this rusty, dull looking lantern and made it into a beautiful piece of outdoor home decor. 
and I think the choice to save that rust color was the perfect one. I found this old birdhouse and it has definitely seen better days. The paint that was on it has completely uh, disintegrated on it and some of the nails were popped out and it just needed some TLC, but it was still in good enough shape that I'm going to be able to fix it up. Just taking my hammer and just pushing in any of those nails that had started to pop out. And then I'm gonna give it a really good sanding with an 80 grit sandpaper so it'll be ready to paint. I am loving this yellow paint. I love picking up these little testers too. It's just the right amount of paint for a couple projects. And I'm also loving this paintbrush from Zebra, the Palm Pro. It works fantastic to get in all those little nooks and crannies on your small projects. I love all of their paint brushes and they have different types for different projects. I'll put the link down below in the description and you can head over to their website and check them out because it is a must for paint brushes. I thought the blue was going to really complement the yellow, so I'm going to do a salt painting technique on the roof to give it a rustic kind of chippy look. I'm going to paint on the paint. This is just a regular latex paint, a sample that I bought at Home Depot, and I'm just painting it all over the roof. And then once I have that done, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle on pickling salt. You can use any type of salt, but the pickling salt, I like the texture that it gives and the chippiness. It's just a nice coarse salt. And just sprinkle it right into that wet paint. Once everything's all dry, I'm taking it outside because it is messy and I'm sanding it down with my 80 grit sandpaper. I think it turned out fantastic. I love the chippy feel and I'm gonna add some embellishments. I found this old door pole and this dresser drawer pole and I'm gonna add them onto the birdhouse just as some focal points. And that looks 100% better than that birdhouse that I found in the dump at the wood pile. I was able to upcycle it and make it pretty again, and it's ready for some renters. Now, this is a whole bunch of things that I found put together. This wire basket and this wooden trivet. I'm not sure what it was off of or where it was from. It's really sturdy and beautiful. I knew I wanted to use that in this project and an old spindle off a table. I'm going to give the wire basket and the trivet a coat of black spray paint. I find sometimes when I find things, I just tuck them away and it takes a while for me to get inspired and figure out what I wanna do with them. And this is one of these projects. I had all three of these things tucked away and it just all of a sudden came to me and I put it together. I drilled a hole down the middle of the trivet and I'm doing a little test hole in the bottom of the spindle and I'm gonna screw those two pieces together. I'm using these staple nails to put the basket on top of the spindle. It was a little tricky to get that hammer in and out of there, but I made it work and I got it on there nice and sturdy. And I've created a beautiful planter with just junk. The wire basket, the spindle, and that trivet on the bottom, and it all pulled together beautifully. So that's why sometimes I can create these wonderful projects because I don't throw anything out because you never know when you're going to need it. Last project, we're going to upcycle this glass coffee jar and a solar light from the dollar store. I wanna paint the glass jar, and the first step that I like to do when painting glass is to give it a light spray of primer, and then I had some of this accent stone spray paint. I wanted to give it a little bit of texture, and it works fantastic for that. I'm gonna take the stake out of the bottom of the solar light, fill up that glass jar with some gravel from my driveway, get out my E6000, and put a little bit around the rim of that glass jar and just set the solar light into it. The weight of the gravel in the glass jar keeps it from tipping over and I added some twine around the neck of it for embellishment and once the sun goes down, the solar light will light up and it will look beautiful. I hope you've enjoyed my dump find upcycles that I've turned into beautiful outdoor decor.
Today we are upcycling this cabinet. I actually found it in the dump, in the wood pile. Fantastic condition, solid pine. It's never had any stain or any paint on it. I'm gonna upcycle it and I'm excited to show you guys how it's gonna turn out. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash this down with some soapy water and then let it dry really well. And then we're going to put on our base coat. Before we get started, let's take off all of the hardware and all of the hinges. I'm going to do a really chippy finish, kind of farmhouse kitchen. And when I'm doing my first coat, I always like to use my darkest color. That way when we distress it at the end, the dark color will be on the bottom and it just makes it look more authentic. And for this project, I'm gonna be using the square paintbrush from Zebra. These are my favorite paintbrushes and they have so many to choose from for every different project. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can head to their website and check it out. I'm gonna paint the entire cabinet inside and out with my homemade black chalk paint. I certainly have been on a roll finding fantastic pieces in the dump at the wood pile and I'm happy because I can upcycle them and share them with you. When I'm painting furniture, I always like to paint the back of the projects also. I usually do it in the same color as the base coat and I don't do any painting techniques or anything on it, but it just brings it all together nicely. The whole cabinet has one coat of that black homemade chalk paint over the entire piece. I'm gonna do a couple of different techniques on this. I'm gonna do the Vaseline method and I'm gonna do the hairspray crackle technique. Both of these techniques will create an aged, authentic, vintage looking finish on your furniture piece that you're doing. This is such an easy way to create chippy paint, just with some Vaseline. You apply it anywhere where that cabinet would have aged naturally, in the corners, around the legs, and you can put a lot on or a little on, depending on how chippy you want it. And then you just paint right over top of that Vaseline. I'm loving this yellow color. If you've been following along, you see that I practically am painting everything in this yellow color. I love it. When we're doing techniques like this and we want to create that chippy layered effect, you want to have two or three different colors. I had this turquoise paint that was given to me by a friend. She'd finished up with it. I grabbed it. I am just going to just dab it here and there and let the yellow peek through in between and cover the whole cabinet. I know, just hang in there. I know it looks like an awful mess right now, but it's gonna be beautiful when it's finished. Um, so make sure you stick through to the end so you can see the end result. I'm also gonna put some graphics on the front door that are gonna be beautiful. And the next step is our hairspray technique. I love using this technique for creating just a fine crackle. This does not give the same kind of crackle as Elmer's glue. This is a little bit smaller, not as pronounced, and I think it just looks more authentic. So I've sprayed my whole piece with firm hairspray, and then I find it also works best if you're using acrylic paint. I didn't have any acrylic paint enough to do this project, so I'm using chalk paint. I'll get a little bit of crackling, but probably not as much as if I had have used acrylic, but we're still gonna get that aged vintage look. We're gonna spray on the hairspray, let it dry, and then paint on top of it, and then take the heat gun and dry it, and the crackles will appear. With all of these painting techniques, I'm trying to replicate what an old piece of furniture looks like after it's been aged over a hundred years or that old sign and that crackled and layered paint look. And with all these techniques, a lot of them, I think I can get pretty close to making them look really authentic. Everything has been sprayed with hairspray and then painted and then completely dried. And then I just took a scraper and scraped all around the edges where that Vaseline was and it just took it down to those other layers of color. Now, this is a little trick too, if you wanna make it even look more authentic. I like using a stencil brush, dipping it in some water and then scrubbing into that paint and it'll take it down to the next layer and you can do it as big or as small of an area as you want and it'll expose that paint underneath and just look at how fantastic that looks and it looks natural. It's completely painted. I love the way that it turned out. Now we're gonna put some graphics on the front door. I've got two graphics that I designed 
and I'm going to put them together so I can have the graphic down the whole door panel. I've put them in my Word program, I've sized them and made sure they fit on the door and I'm using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I have all kinds of full tutorials on my channel on how to do this step by step if you've never tried it before, but it's so versatile and it works fantastic. We're just applying the Mod Podge on each of the graphics, putting them down, making sure we've gotten all the bubbles and all the wrinkles out, and then we're gonna set it aside and let it dry overnight. These graphics are available in my Etsy store. I'll put the link down below in the description so you can check it out. There's these graphics plus so many more. I've let these graphics sit overnight and now I've just got a little dish of water with a little rag and I'm just dampening that paper until you can just start to see the graphics show through and then rubbing off the paper. This technique takes a little bit of practice but once you get the hang of it, it's so much fun. some hardware on the door. It didn't have a handle so I found this pole in my stash and I'm going to give it a little bit of a patina. The turquoise paint that I used on the cabinet I'm going to paint on the hardware and then wipe it off with a rag. You can also wipe it off with a baby wipe and it'll just stay on all of the little nooks and crannies and it'll give that patina look to the hardware. And once it's completely dry I'm going to seal it all up with my engine enamel and it'll make it really durable. And the cabinet is completely done and I am in love with it. I think I was able to really replicate that chippy layered antique looking wood and the graphics on the front turned out fabulous. Adding a little bit of a patina look to the hardware just took it to the next level. It's quite a transformation from that plain pine cabinet, had no character, to what I've created. So I'd love to know down in the comments what you think about my upcycle. It's a beautiful day here. The sun is shining, spring has come, and this is the first project on my to-do list. I saved this bench from the dump and I'm excited to upcycle it. First of all, I love this paint color and the chippiness and the way it has worn is fabulous. I don't wanna change any of that. I wanna keep all the paint that's there intact. I just wanna freshen it up. It's not in perfect shape, it's really old, but the ornate legs on it and the sides of the bench are just fabulous. It needs a good cleaning, so I'm going to use some TSP and scrub it down and get all the little bits of dirt and loose paint off. This TSP is great. It'll remove any grease or grime or dirt. And I'm just going to use my scraper and just remove any loose bits of paint. It always amazes me what people just throw out because this bench had so much potential. Let me know in the comments if you would have saved this from the landfill. Now I'm just gonna use this scuff pad instead of sandpaper cause I don't wanna take any of the paint off. I just wanna remove any loose bits that are still there and this works really well cause it's a very fine grit. I have it all cleaned and prepped and sanded down and I'm gonna put on my homemade stain to bring out some of the wood grain. Um, I wanna leave as much as the original paint as I could so the stain will make everything all pop and uh, that's what I'm gonna do next. I'll put a link down below in the description and a link up top here of how you can make your own DIY stain. You can make it into any color and it's so cheap and affordable and easy. And I'm just gonna apply the stain over the whole bench, even over the existing paint. Um, and then I, it's just gonna freshen up that wood and bring out the grain and make it uh, pop more. And the nice thing about this stain is you can layer it. You can put one layer on. If you think that it's not maybe quite dark enough, you can mix up a little bit more and put more on until you get the desired color that you like. And I think it looks really great. It's really freshened up this wood and it doesn't look so dried out and aged.
After you've applied all the stain, you just take a rag and wipe off anywhere where it's still wet. And I thought this would look really cute with a nice quote on the front. I'm going to do my Mod Podge reversed graphic transfer technique to put these words on the front of the bench. I have a full tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this technique. I'll put a link down below in the description and up here in the corner. Okay, this is dried completely and I'm just gonna take a damp rag and rub off that paper and you're gonna have the words left on the bench. I love using this technique. It's a great way to update furniture or your upcycled projects or to make wooden signs. And I'm enjoying being out in the sun and enjoying the warm weather and being able to get outside and do some upcycled projects that I've had stored away for the winter in my shed. Okay, and the graphics are all done and I love the way they look on the front of this bench. If you're interested in purchasing these graphics, they're in my Etsy store. I'll put a link down below and up above. We're ready to put on the top coat. I'm putting on a Varathane outdoor polyacrylic sealer. This is going to go in on my deck and it's going to be outside in the elements so I want to make sure that it's sealed really well. So I'll probably put two or three coats on it and it'll be good to go. And there it is, all finished, and I'm so glad I was able to save it from the landfill. Once I put that top coat of the Varathane on it, it just made that yellow pop, and it looks fantastic. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this upcycled bench. I'm loving it. Today we're working on a dump find. I found this little table in the wood pile at the landfill. It's in kind of rough shape, but I know I can save it. It's just one of those cheap little tables and it all comes apart. And I'm going to do some of my one step paint and some gift wrap paper decoupage on it. Kind of going to do a funky spin on it. So I'm excited to show you guys what I have in mind. So we got lots of work. Let's get started. This table has definitely seen better days. A lot of the finish has come off and it's loose. It needs to be tightened up once it's finished, but I know I can make it into something a lot better. This is a type of side table that all the legs and the spindles unscrew. So it actually makes it easier for painting. I can take it all apart and then lay it all out and paint it properly. When you see these tables out and about, don't overlook them. They're really easy to make pretty again. I took my 220 sanding block and I sanded it all down to get it all nice and smooth. And then I had some holes all around the outside of it. I think it had a ledge on it at one point. Filled it up with some wood filler, let it dry, and then I sanded that down and then took a baby wipe and wiped everything down clean so we have a nice surface to start on. This is the gift wrap paper that I'm going to use. I picked it up at the dollar store and I had this paint in my stash. I'm gonna turn it into one step paint, but look how it matches that gift wrap. It's gonna to come together perfectly. I've mixed up my one step paint. If you missed that video, I'll put the link down in the description where you can watch that and get the recipe from there. It basically eliminates any prep to your surface or any top coat. It's all in one. It works fantastic and wow is it ever durable. If you want to paint a piece of furniture or 
cabinet doors, this is a recipe to use because it is really hard to distress afterwards. It's so hard. So if you're just gonna do a solid color, this works perfect. Now I'm going to get painting these spindles. I have a little trick for painting spindles and it really speeds up the process. Also have a full tutorial there. I'll put that link down below in the description if you wanna see um, some really fun spindles that I painted in some fabulous colors. You can check that out after. Basically, you're just putting on a rubber glove and then one of those spare socks that you've had laying around for forever, bring them out into your um, crafting area and use them to paint spindles. Dip your hand in the paint with the sock and just rub it on the spindles. These are probably gonna take a couple coats. I'm gonna let them dry completely in between before I add the next coat. And they're coming along perfect. I think they're still gonna need one more coat. And I've got two coats on these two shelves. They look great, but they're gonna need one more coat also. I've got two full coats on these spindles. It's covered really well, but I think I wanna do one more coat and I'm gonna sponge it on. I just have a little piece of sponge and I'm just dipping it in the paint and I'm just gonna dab it up and down along that whole spindle and it's gonna give it a nice smooth finish. And I'm also gonna use that same process on those two shelves. This has got two coats on it already. I'd let it completely dry and now I'm gonna put my third coat on with a sponge. It's going to get rid of any brush lines or any imperfections that you've had when you were painting it if you just dab that sponge up and down. My spindles are drying. I love this red. It is so fun and so whimsical, and it's always nice every once in a while to kind of venture out of that white and black and do something with a splash of color. Now we're gonna get the gift wrap and we're gonna cut a piece of it off the roll a little bit bigger than the top. We're going to Mod Podge it on with my matte finish and you're just gonna brush it on. You don't want it too thick. If you have it thick, it's going to wrinkle up too much and bubble too much. You just want a thin coat, just enough to stick that wrapping paper onto the surface. One thing with decoupaging that you should always kind of keep in the back of your mind is you're never going to have a project that's 100% no wrinkles or no bubbles. It's virtually impossible. And I usually, when I'm doing projects like this, I embrace the wrinkles. I love it when they show up every once in a while because you can make it look distressed and old and it doesn't look like it's just a hunk of paper stuck on the top of your surface. Now I have added two coats of Mod Podge on top of that piece of wood. Let both of those coats dry completely. Now I'm gonna take that gift wrap and place it exactly where I want on that piece of wood. The flowers, I kind of want to make sure they're centered up and are going to look nice when it's finished. And I'm putting a piece of parchment paper on top. Make sure it's parchment paper, not wax paper. Then we're going to iron it on. I have my iron set on the highest setting with no steam. And you're just going to take your time and just slowly just iron on that gift wrap. And as you're doing that, Mod Podge underneath will melt and adhere the paper to your project. I really love using the iron-on method to decoupage. It works really well when you're using it on a bigger project too. And the nice thing about using gift wrap paper is it comes in a bigger roll. So you can decoupage a bigger project. You're not limited to just using a piece of paper. That ironed on really well. Now I'm gonna take my sanding block this is a uh, 80 grit sanding block and I'm just gonna take it around the edges and just sand it. And as you do that, you're gonna leave a really nice clean edge around your piece of wood. Now I'm gonna take that sanding block across the top of that gift wrap paper. I just want to age it, kind of distress it so it doesn't look perfect. And as you can see, it did kind of wrinkle up quite a bit. I don't know if it was a different type of gift wrap paper, but I actually really like it. And as I'm sanding it, I'm liking it even more. It gives it a really distressed look. By sanding it, it 
knocks off that top edge of the wrinkles and leaves this beautiful distressed finish. I'm embracing the wrinkles on this one because I love the way that it turned out. I'm gonna seal this up with engine enamel. This table will probably be used for a plant stand or a little end table and I want it to be sealed really well and really be durable. This engine enamel is perfect for that. We are ready to put this dump fine table back together. And I'm going to put a couple coats of paint on the bottoms of those shelves. Someone else's trash is my treasure. I knew with a little bit of TLC and a little bit of patience, I could turn this into something beautiful again. And I love the bright color and the whimsical feel of it.